Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we're going to be taking a look at the Hinderer Half Track. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 6.75 inches with a blade length coming in at 2.75 inches. Cutting edge is coming in at 2.6 inches with a blade width at 1.16 inches. Of course, that's down here at the, uh, at the widest point of the blade. Uh, we have a blade thickness coming in at 0.16 inches. So this is a chunky little slab of CPM 20 CV steel with a warm cliff style blade, a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 3.875 inches with a handle thickness of 0.52 inches. The handle width on this guy is 1.04 inches with a handle material of carbon fiber on one side and, uh, well, I guess titanium on both sides and carbon fiber on one side. Um, this carbon fiber scale is an aftermarket, which we will talk a little more about when we get to the handle and ergos. We have a frame lock locking mechanism, a user of right hand tip up only carry with a weight coming in at four ounces. A price of $425 base. Now that is, uh, this is obviously not base. I will point out everything that is not base as we go through the review. And designed by the one and only Rick Hinderer of Hinderer Knives. So we have uh, some uh, high class American quality here. And let's do some size comparisons to get a better idea of the length. Here we have the Civivi Elementum as well as the Wii Banter. So pretty close in uh, in terms of length with the Banter. It is just slightly longer than the Banter by, by just a hair, um, but for all intents and purposes, just about the same. And then uh, one more little round of comparisons here with a couple other ones that I think will really help. Probably the two best examples I have. This is the Giant Malice Ace Biblio. As well as the Urban, <laughs> Urban ADC F5.5. Two designs from Jesper Voxness. Always good to have those on the table. They are two of my favorites. And uh, as you can see, pretty much in line. Obviously the F5.5 is a little longer. But uh, there you go. When it comes to ergos, in terms of like overall feel and hand, it's actually somewhat similar to the Biblio, just it's a little thicker than the Biblio. So take that for what it's worth. And now let's get into this knife. In, in all honesty, in my opinion, this is probably the most unique hinderer knife out there. And mainly due to the aesthetics that come with it. Um, it's obviously wildly different from an Eclipse or an XM18. It's much smaller, um, and it has a wicked little Warncliffe blade. A uh, rather average edge coming at 24 thousandths, but there's really not many Hinderer knives that have the super slicey edges. Um, they're more of hard-use, hard-work knives, so the 24 thousandths does resemble that. Um, but regardless of the thinness of this blade or lack thereof, um, it is still a cardboard assassin. I mean, this guy absolutely eats through cardboard. This is a, this is another one of the D'Lo knives, and he said, "Man, you have to run this thing through some cardboard." It is uh, one of the one of the funnest knives I've ever had to use on cardboard to break down boxes, and he was right. This really does. I it has to be with the angle of the Warncliffe edge here. Um, coming at it straight up. As you guys can see, the one cliff is not coming out straight. It is coming back at an angle. So when you're pushing down, it kind of has that little bit of an angle coming down through the cardboard, and it really does uh, make quick work of it, let me tell you. So very, very fun to do that with, and a choil that I personally really, really enjoy may not be good for everybody's hands, but I tell you, for my hand, I would use this and I wouldn't worry about the edge being close to my finger and cutting me. Um, it works for me. I really, really like this choil. Um, and it actually feels pretty good. <clears throat> well, we'll save that when we get to the ergos. But regardless, a choil that I think will be good for most people's fingers, um, unless you have some, you know, some thicker, chubbier fingers, uh, may not fit well in there. But as you can see with my fingers, it works really well. Really, really enjoy that. I also love the tip on this blade. Probably my favorite part of this blade, in all honesty. It's just, it's at a really nice point in line with the pivot. So it's just kind of always in the right spot when you need it. You're not 
working too far up or you don't have to kind of angle it too far back to get the tip in there. Um, just a really, really good placement and thickness and grind and everything when it comes to this tip. This is still somewhat of a slicey tip, uh, even though it's not super thin behind the edge. Just a very, very useful, hardworking tip that with that CPM 20 CV steel, uh, gonna be a little harder to snap the tip on this guy. I mean, you could, you don't want to do anything too stupid with it, but, uh, but just a very good, durable, hardworking tip. Now going into the handle and ergos, as I was saying, you're using that choil area and you know, you're doing good work, the detail work. And then sometimes you just have to really power through a cut. You go back like this, thumb goes right on the jimping, which is great by the way, excellent jimping on this blade. Um, and you just power through it and it feels really good in hand in this position. Uh, no real issues. I'm really surprised at all the kind of all the corners and angles back here, how I don't feel any of it really digging into my hand or palm. And it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't, it feels good. It feels good. I don't really have any complaints when it comes to ergos. And I was very surprised about that. I thought for sure I'd have a gripe somewhere when it comes to the ergos of this knife. I don't really have that. Do not really have that. And even without the choil, I can still get just enough of all four of my fingers wrapped around the knife. Um, can maybe argue that not all of my pinky is wrapped around the bottom, but it feels like it is. It may not look like it, but it does feel like it. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters is the feel. And uh, I do, I do like it. I like the full four finger grip. Um, I do prefer the deep carry clip for this upgrade. Um, the regular hinderer clip, especially for as small as this knife is, it just leaves too much of the knife sticking out of the pocket in my opinion. So for a knife like this, I always do kind of prefer either a, a deeper carry milled clip or a bent deep carry clip like, the, like you have here, which I believe is uh, an MXG gear clip almost positive on that. Um, and they make great clips as well. I love, love, love this red dark matter carbon fiber. Um, if you guys don't know about fat carbon, I'm sure most of you probably do. I feature it on my channel a lot. I usually call it out. Um, it's just fantastic. It is the best looking marble carbon fiber you can get. And now uh, fat carbon went a step further and mix some color in with it. So you have red and there's also green, blue, um, they have like copper and, and gold. Uh, really, really cool. Probably my favorite carbon fiber ever is the dark matter. It's, it's just really sweet. And it makes any knife look better. I mean, especially this one with the bronze titanium and the black clip. It just pairs so amazingly well with this clip. Which And this clip was made by Carbidize. Um, I'm sure a lot of you probably heard of Carbidize. If you're big into the knife scene, um, Carbidize is someone who makes custom skills for knives and he does a fantastic job of it. So I don't know what his books are like. I don't know if he's currently taking other orders. I really don't know, um, but I know he does really good work. So he is someone worth looking into if you want some custom scales. And uh, he did a really good job on this one as well. Uh, easy lock bar access and rock solid lock up on this guy. Um, very easy access. As you can see, you have kind of milled areas here that give you a lot of room to just easily, very easily get your thumb in there. I think even for really someone that has really big, stubby or wide thumbs, uh, gonna fit in there very well and just move that back to close the blade. But once you get that blade out, I mean, we're talking, yeah, bank vault lock up there. Absolutely nothing to worry about. You got your over travel stop, you got your lock bar insert, you got all the nice uh, heavy duty additions for the locking security of the knife and it just looks really, really good. I've noticed, it, it's always interesting to me on certain knives how big of the gap between the lock bar and the knife is. Some knives have very, very small, uh, a very small gap in between, and some have a bigger one. This has a bigger one. It doesn't bother me one bit. I'm just kind of curious as to, to why it's like that compared from maker to maker. I'm sure someone knows out there. If you know, or if, if there's any real uh, distinctive reason behind, let me know, I'd be interested to hear that. But um. But no, not really here or there, just kind of an observation I made. Um, going into the action on this guy, the action is pretty darn good. Um, most hinder knives have great action, especially now with the triway system. Blade flies out. You do want to be careful when you're deploying this blade of not putting too much pressure on the lock bar. That will make this blade considerably harder to deploy. Um, I've done that before. You, you kind of get that pressure up there, and then you really have to fling it out. Now, obviously, you saw it fly out and made a good sound, but I really, really felt that on my fingertip. So what I would recommend um, is keeping your fingers on the clip here. 
If you have them on the clip, you can pretty much rest assured that you will not ever have that issue and the blade pops out. So that's the only thing you really have to watch out for. Um, Dila was actually able to, to middle finger flick this. I can't. And I'm a, I consider myself a pretty good middle finger flicker. And I, I just, I cannot do it. Not for the life of me. So some of you may be able to do that. I can't, just so you know. Um, but the flipper is very satisfying. You have that really good click. Hinderer knives always have a nice sound, a really good click when you're deploying the blade. I'll, I'll shut up for a second. Just very nice, very crisp, solid. Um, always good acoustics with the Hinderer. So I like that. Um, no real issues with the action whatsoever. It's it's typical Hinderer action. If you had them before, um, I think you're going to be pretty pretty well acquainted with it. It's not going to be anything uh, disappointing or surprising to you. It just is what it is. Very solid and consistent. Going into the overall thoughts of this knife, I like it. I really do like it. I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of this knife. It's a great knife, an extremely solid build, but in all honesty, I, I don't know if I personally would pay the $425 price tag for this knife. Um, and that's the $425 for the stock. We should go over real quick. Um, the scale and the clip would not come with this knife. You would get your regular flat clip and probably a G10 scale. Maybe they offer them in my Carter titanium sometimes, but it's usually just a G10 scale. So 425 for, for the G10 regular clip and this knife, it's, I mean, it's American made. So I don't, I don't necessarily think it's like crazy expensive. I mean, it is crazy expensive, but not like it should definitely be less expensive, I guess. You know, I, I, I'm i okay with the $425 price tag. I just don't know if I personally like this knife enough to spend $425 on it. Um, you know, it, it value is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Everything's in the eye of the beholder when it comes to anything, especially a knife that is this expensive. Some people will think it's it's justified and others won't. Um, I Like, again, and I, I shouldn't say that because I do think the price is pretty justified. I mean, again, it's 100% made and sourced in the USA. Um, but again, it's just not one that I think I personally would drop that kind of money on. Um, I do have a hinderer in mind at some point down the road that I think I'd like to pick up. Um, but not probably not this one, but it is a great knife. It's one I would recommend if you, if you're someone that really is into the smaller knives and really like the smaller knives, especially Warren Cliffs, and pretty unique designs with decent ergos. It's definitely one I would recommend because it is a nice one. You just have to be okay with the price tag. Um, so that's that, guys. That is the Hinderer Half Track. Let me know what you think. Yeah, that, that Warncliffe blade looks good from any angle. I will say that. I really love that Warncliffe blade. So let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.